If you're like a lot of my language students, there is one tool that you're not using that could be improving your speaking, pronunciation, vocabulary, and more. Let's take a closer look. Hey guys, it's Jeff with Fluent American again, and we are looking at poetry. Now I know when a lot of people think about poetry, they immediately jump to like Shakespeare, or think of like the 1800s, or think of love and things like that. And sure, those can all be components of poetry, but it's a much wider field than that. And I think it's also something that when you incorporate it into your own English language learning, can have lots of benefits for all those things I mentioned earlier. Now, if you're looking for a definition of poetry, this is definitely not gonna be the best video for that because poetry has so many different definitions depending on who you ask. But we're going to be looking today at some haiku, which is a poetry form from Japan. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at um, some translations of Basho, who is a, a super famous um, haiku poet. And again, we're gonna be analyzing each of these haiku based on a couple different things. Again, some pronunciation exercises that you can do, um, some reasons why this can be helpful for vocabulary and reading as well. Let's take a look at our first one here. I come weary in search of an inn. Ah, these wisteria flowers. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. So let's talk really quick about pronunciation. How can haiku help pronunciation? Well, especially if you can find audio of someone reading the poems, it's gonna be really helpful for things like identifying stress. Let's kind of just read this and kind of play with the stress just to see what the different options are. So for instance, you could read it as, I come weary, I come weary, stressing weary. But you could also play with the stress. How does the meaning change if you put the stress on I? I come weary, I come weary. Same thing with, for instance, the last line. Ah, these wisteria flowers. You could stress wisteria, but that could also change the meaning a little bit by stressing these, like, ah, these wisteria flowers. So again, playing with haiku just gives you an opportunity to kind of read, practice placing stress on different words. You can also be paying attention to things like linking as well. For instance, in that second line, in search of an in, in search of an in, there's lots of linking here between search of, so that ch sound on search is gonna link with that O on of, search of, in search of, and in. Also in the of van, that F sound is actually gonna link with an, and also take on a slight voice sound. So it's gonna sound more like a V, of van, and then that last N on an is gonna link with in. So it's gonna sound more like van in, van in. In search of an in, in search of an in, in search of an in. So again, it's only three lines. Haikus are super short. They don't have a whole lot of words to them. So I think they're really great forms to use for studying English, starting to notice pronunciation, but also paying attention to vocabulary. Haiku are super dependent on nature vocabulary, nature words. So for instance, the names of flowers, um, the names of bodies of water, geographical features like mountains, different indications of weather and times and seasons. So if you're looking to improve your descriptive vocabulary, whether for your writing or for your speaking, I think haiku is a great form. So for instance, some of the great descriptions I really like here, weary, weary, which is a synonym for tired, tired, so weary or tired. Also, for instance, we get in here instead of hotel. Now, of course, in is a little bit more old fashioned, but again, we're trying to improve our vocab here, so it's another option. And then maybe you're weak on flowers. Um, by the way, we have a video for that, which you should definitely check out. But this is giving you some other words that you can use for describing your nature images. So for instance, wisteria, a type of flower. Let's take a look at another haiku and see how all these things are incorporated there. On a withered branch, a crow is sitting this autumn eve. On a withered branch, a crow is sitting this autumn eve. Let's try and identify what were some distresses that I used originally. On a withered branch, I stressed branch, a crow is sitting, stressing crow, this autumn eve, heavier stress on eve. But you could of course play around with the stresses. And again, I would encourage you just to kind of get used to moving stresses around in different parts of a sentence, getting used to hearing it in other people's speech. Some other ways we could read this. On a withered branch, on a withered branch, you could change the stress withered if you really wanna emphasize that quality of the branch. 
or you could also, of course, just move the stress onto the verb. A crow is sitting on a withered branch. A crow is sitting. And instead of this autumn eve, you could say this autumn eve, this autumn eve, if you really want to stress emphasize that it's occurring now. Again, in terms of linking, where, where are some places where linking is occurring? We get the Anna, Anna, Anna withered branch. A crow is, crow is, so that W sound on crow is going to link with the I on is, a crow is, a crow is. Also note that linking between is sitting, is sitting. So it's not is sitting. You can link them together if you want. Is sitting, is sitting. Starting off with like a Z sound and then transitioning to an S, is sitting. This autumn, this autumn. So again, that S on this linking with the A on autumn. This autumn eve. Again, in terms of vocabulary, some things are helpful here for describing things. How about that word withered? I think that's a great adjective. You know, instead of just saying like old or broken or weak, I think withered kind of captures a lot of those aspects. So again, this is another advantage of a haiku in poetry in general, but especially haikus because they're so short, they're packed with lots of vocabulary in a tiny space. So if you're trying not to be overwhelmed with what you're reading, I think haikus are a great option. Just to give you a little bit of shadowing practice now, I'm going to read all these haiku again, and then I will pause after giving you a chance to try to repeat after me. Again, the key with shadowing is to try to copy my same pronunciation, intonation, and stress. I come weary in search of an inn. Ah, these wisteria flowers. The cry of the cicada gives us no sign that presently it will die. On a withered branch, a crow is sitting this autumn eve. An ancient pond with a sound from the water of the frog as it plunges in. Hey, real quick, if you want some more pronunciation practice with me, feel free to join our pronunciation group. You can find more information at patreon.com slash fluentamerican. Have a specific poem, haiku, or other work of literature that you enjoy? Let us know in the comments.